Uh, hi, welcome back guys. So in the last video, we finally knew how to get uh, the correct heat exchanger sizing using the rigorous model. So we have done the rigorous model using an initial guess uh, of the outlet temperature of 125 degrees C and then gave us the correct, you know, the correct calculations. So now we kind of want to uh, do, the, do the recycle loop and so we'll probably need to add pipes, compressors and maybe coolers as well. So first thing first, we kind of, before we actually start doing that, we want to kind of uh, maximize the, optimize this uh, little reactor system a little bit. And uh, to do that, we want to decrease this reactor outlet temperature from 280 to something like 270. Because uh, if not, it's a very big waste of uh, exergy or energy. So we want to reduce this to 270 so that we can generate more high pressure steam. And at the same time, we maintain the minimum delta T min, the temperature difference of this uh, heat exchanger, should be around 20 degrees C. And that will give you around the temperature, the inlet temperature should be around 270. So what we can do, yeah, so it should be around 270 and that will give you a delta T min of about two, uh, 20 degrees C and that doesn't violate you know, any of our heuristics. So that's a good initial guess and we can do that so that we can uh, maximize our steam generation capacity and of course uh, you know uh, preserve I mean uh, yeah you can generate more steam and at the same time we increase a single pass conversion so just remember how much methanol we are generating now 195 kg mole per hour so let's uh, increase the number of tubes maybe to something like 600 so that's just a kind of a guess some guesswork so we want to kind of look at this uh, outlet temperature. We want to make sure it's around 270. So yeah, it's around 272. So let's just go a little more, 700 maybe. Okay, so 700 seems to look good. It's about 271 degrees C. It's perfect. And well, our high pressure steam generation, I mean the power outflow is a lot more now. It's about uh, 1.6 megawatts, which is quite a fair bit. And we want to, you know, continue looking at uh, yeah, our heat transfer design, heat transfer parameters. So again, it kind of uh, the watt heat transfer coefficient kind of changes so we got to change it back to the default values the correct values and we want to make sure that the mole flow used to calculate this uh, HPS generation energy stream is uh, reflective of how much uh, how, how much uh, high pressure water you actually put into this system so here it's saying about 187.1 so let's iterate to to see whether these two uh, numbers can match. This mole flow for used for the initial gas can match the uh, molar flow for the actual condensed HPS going in. So I'm going to do that mm, just a few times just to see whether it, it iterates. So now it's going at 190.5. So let's do 190.5. So it's 190.6. It's a pretty close number. I just want to be a little more correct. Okay, so we are at 190.6. Let me just save this file and look at this uh, outlet temperature. Wow, just nice. 270.8 degrees C. And we can look at the plug flow performance. You can see that it goes from 245, goes all the way up to 281, and back down to 270. And that's precisely what we want. Okay, so we do have our steam generation of about 190.6 kg mole per hour, which is quite a fair bit. And look at our methanol generation, which is about 222. So we, boost, we boosted up the methanol generation just by increasing the number of tubes. And we have also boosted our steam generation capacity. So now, now let's look into some pipes. So we have not introduced pipes before. So... Uh, well, we can introduce pipes so that you know you don't have to keep using your heuristics to do pressure drop calculations. So we can just introduce this thing called pipe segment. This pipe segment 
the pipe segment will be somewhere just below your expanders. So you can see this thing here, pipe, pipe segments just below your expander, compressor and pump. And that will be just below your air cooler and heat exchanger taps. So this is your pipe segment. So let's just do a 50 meter pipe because we estimate, you know, from this reactor out to the next heat exchanger, about 50 meters worth of pipe. So I just put 50 meter pipe and let's just draw it in and so we have hot the outlet i'll just have hot reactor effluent to heat exchanger okay so the energy i just put it as pipe heat loss okay so uh, when i add these two streams it'll just say no segment added so to look at the segments, you got to look at basically this rating tab and you uh, you have to click the append segment button. So we have a length of about 50 meters as a SID. You can have an elevation change if you want to go up here or down here, but you don't want to do that. Uh, the diameter, I'll just put as 200 mm or 20 cm. Oh, the outer diameter, I should just put I just give a random number like 250 mm and the inner diameter will be about 200 mm. Now use mount steel. Okay, so that will be, you know, the kind of uh, this will be the kind of uh, what do you call that? The pipe segment. And now now Heisis is saying that the heat transfer information is under specified. So let's go to the heat transfer. Go to the heat loss. And okay, so we we look at the ambient temperature we assume it to be about 32 degrees c if you are in a tropical climate anyway so or if you want a worst case scenario 25 degrees c and the heat transfer coefficient the overall heat transfer coefficient is in the watts per meter square per kelvin let's just give it about uh, 400 because that's a gas heat transfer coefficient so let's go you see the heat loss here wow it's quite a lot So the the thing is cooling from uh, 127 to 117. Okay, let's assume it's insulated pipe. Okay, it shouldn't be that much. I'll just put 50 watts per meter square per Kelvin or watts per meter square per degree C. And this is much more reasonable. Okay, so yeah, the, the other, the other uh, heat transfer coefficient was for gas gas heat exchanger which you kind of assume you want to maximize the heat transfer but in this case we want to assume that uh, the pipe the pipe uh, is an insulated pipe so you, you don't want the heat transfer out that's why I use a lower value but this kind of things you kind of have to you know, input your own guesses so I'm guessing it's at 50 watts per meter square per degree C so that's that's basically it for pipe so the pipe heat loss I'm just going to press 3 a few times to get the correct heat loss value so this is a 50 meter pipe of about 20 uh, cm or 200 mm in diameter pressure draw about 20 kPa and yeah not too bad so that's basically a pipe okay and we still realize that our our effluent is still very hot about 125 degrees C and that's a lot of useful heat okay so not to worry You'll just use the uh, heat exchanger and this one I'll just want to call exchanger this I want to call this heat exchanger the tentative one because there will be some heat integration that you need to do later okay there will be some heat integration that you kind of want to do later and you want to connect these streams to uh, you want to connect this uh, this uh, hot streams to some other cool streams somewhere either upstream or downstream in the plant so as to you know save uh, energy so I'm just I'm just gonna assume randomly you can cool it down to about 80 degrees C okay so again the pressure drop I'm just gonna put a hundred each side okay a tentative heat exchanger and I'll put this as partly cooled heat exchanger effluent okay so the temperature i will just put around 80 70 degrees c okay 
70 degrees C and why 70 degrees C? Uh, I'm assuming I'm hitting a 50 degrees uh, C kind of uh, stream so that's why I'm putting, a, I'm putting a 70 degrees C kind of uh, cap and to further cool it I'll probably want a I'll probably want a air cooler because air cooling is cheap so I'm just going to drag out this air cooler thingy down here and I'm going to connect this in and I'll connect a uh, out stream it's like air, I'm going to call it air cooled uh, effluent okay and the temperature I'm specifying as around 50 degrees C okay I'm just going to save it a few times and it says in this air cooler it says unknown delta P so you just go to the design tab so the air cooler tab has a few tabs there will be a design tab the connections has already been done so I just put air cooler uh, reactor effluent air cooler okay yeah, yeah. Uh, then the outlet temperature or the air intake temperature I'll just put it as 32 because that's our ambient temperature assumption and the process stream delta P what is it I'm just going to give it another 100 kilopascals and the outlet temperature it will assume as 42.86 degrees C and there you go we have your 50 degrees C out <laughs>